Hey everyone, this is Eric here together with Mary van Roy. So we're shooting here today in Luleå, Sweden. Uh, and this was the most uh, remarkable coincidence because I happened to be here for a few days uh, with family. And uh, I know that you were in northern Sweden, but I didn't know where. So I just thought I'd send you an email and ask. And it turns out you were like an hour away from here. Yeah. So um, we were like, okay, let's meet. <laughs> let's make this video together about coincidences. coincidences. <laughs> you said it, you said it right. <laughs> and synchronicities. I hope you're gonna enjoy this video. So today we are gonna be talking about magical coincidences, weird things that happened to us that changed our lives. We're gonna talk with uh, Mary and she's an ENFP YouTuber and lifestyle vlogger and she has a really cool channel and I thought it would be great to talk about coincidences and synchronicities with an ENFP because I feel like you are kind of masters of uh, connecting things and finding these weird strange mm -hmm. patterns. Mm -hmm. I want to start off by just asking you, have you had any uh, weird synchronicities or uh, weird things that happened to you? Yes, definitely. One of the major ones that really sticks out to me is, okay, so this was a couple years ago. Actually, I don't know how many years ago, but maybe, I don't know, four years ago or something. And I was in a really hard time in my life and I was about to go to sleep and I was just at a really kind of bad place and I was just like literally I was just at like the end of my wits like I was just like I need something mm -hmm. so I remember it was like a very significant night because I was literally just like please like I never prayed before but I was just like please God like I need a big change I need a big change I was just like at the end of my ability to like keep living the way I was yeah so anyways I went to sleep with that thought of like big change please I wake up the next morning and I get a text from my oldest brother, who never messaged me at all. So that was already weird. I was like, what's this? He texts me, and he says literally, in, and I didn't tell anyone this. You know, this was a personal thing that I did, that I was like praying to God. And in the text, he said, randomly, he's like, hey, Mary, there's a job opening here in Saudi Arabia. Um, you know, I thought I would ask you if you're interested, if you are interested in a big change, capital B, capital C. He capitalized big change. And I was like... Literally, I was like, wait, how did he know? Like, what? There's no way he knew. So that was just weird. That was just weird. And then I was like, all right. Literally, that's how fast it happened. The next morning and that synchronicity of big change. Mm -hmm. I would have never guessed that. That's just something. I think that definitely qualifies as uh, synchronicity or as a coincidence. Uh, I know that, uh, yeah, the thing with synchronicity and the reason why Carl Jung studied it so much was because uh, the big impact it can have on uh, our psychological defenses you know because uh, most of us we can get kind of stuck in this like rut where we're mm. like stuck in a script and we don't know how to break it or what to do and uh, i think synchronicity happens just in that time of hopelessness where you like you know you've been playing your script to wits and you have no idea what to do with it anymore and uh, that's when you know uh, your entire like higher self like really manifests and really starts going like uh, uh, what can I, what can you do to really uh, change your life and get to it, the next level? It really does show, like that example you said of the butterfly. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah <laughs> I told I told basically a story about a butterfly. Well, basically Carl Jung he explained uh, his term synchronicity best, and what he said, like he had he had he had a patient once. Uh, a lady who was very much in thinking, like she uh, believed in science and reason and rationale, and she thought that was the answer to everything. But uh, she was going through struggles, and uh, Carl Jung was not able to reach her or get true to her or talk to her about how to change those things. So at the moment, uh, they were discussing one of her dreams, and she dreamt about, I think it was a monarch butterfly. Uh, and so basically, um, when she said that, Carl Jung got up, and he went to the window and he opened it and out uh, in from the window uh, uh, came a monarch butterfly. And you know, that was so baffling for her. When she saw that butterfly, it's the same color as in her dream. She was like, how? How did it <laughs> come here? What does this mean? And that was the time when Carl Jung really got through to her because at that point she realized like there is a message here. There is something I have to do or something mm -hmm. I have to listen to. And that's what I was going to say. Um, I feel like... When you have, when you yourself have experienced something like that, that's so like beyond you, like it really does give you this 
almost knowing that there's something that is out there, whether it's love attractions, whatever, whatever it is, I can't speak for it. But I think that when you yourself have experienced something like that, then you just know it's just like, okay, my hands are off. Like this is too specific, too magical. Mm-hmm. Like that experience that I told you with my experience, like that's a real thing that happened. And that to me is like too spot on. And there's all these other, you know, things I can, maybe I'll share a couple of them, but like there's just too many of those type of things that have happened that are just beyond my own understanding that's just like okay i know that like when carl jung operates with the idea of the self he doesn't just mean you're what's inside your own body Mm. like uh, you are just as much what you are experiencing on the inside as everything you're experiencing on the outside so Mm. technically you are your entire world you are your brother and everything that's happening to you as well so that's also like we Mm. we we, sometimes we just focus on ourselves what can i do what Mm -hmm. do i need to do but a lot of time it's uh we should think broaden our scope and learn to think and uh see the whole world around us and all the people and all the uh, people in our lives and all the things that are happening around us and I feel actually like the reason why I thought it was so perfect to ask you about this because uh, you've been an ENFP YouTuber but you're also a lifestyle vlogger but you made a lot of videos about being yeah, an ENFP and uh, mm-hmm. uh, I've noticed that ENFPs are really good at noticing patterns and opportunities mm. uh, have you noticed that in yourself? Uh, <laughs> hmm. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I think we need more um, specificities of what that means. Well, it's noticing a new shiny object, a new place you can go to, a new Definitely. thing you can do. I mean, sometimes it gets overboard. Like, once I have some cool idea, then I'll delve into it, and then I'll be like, this idea, this idea, this idea, this idea. Like, especially when it comes to, for example, traveling. I'll be like, okay, I'm going to go this route, then this route, this route, and then I'm going to also visit this and this. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea, because I know this person here, and then we can do that there. And then, okay, how will I get there? It's just like, it actually becomes too much, so I need to rein it back sometimes. Mm. But, um... Yeah, I'm trying to think of any examples. Um, I guess I do notice, I don't know if an example will come to mind, but I do notice I do seem to have, a, if I'm to compare, like more of an ability to find a route to get somewhere that maybe other people would be like, no, that's impossible. Like, we'll never be able to do that. And I'm like, yeah, we can. And then I'll do it. Yeah, so <laughs> it's not just noticing opportunities, but it's also being able to know how to make it happen, right? Hmm. Yeah, well, I guess going along with that too, I guess this can kind of tie into that question. I'm not sure if this is what you meant, but like when I found myself in not good situations, Mm -hmm. um, like when I was living in Chicago and I wasn't happy there and then I started to open up to different people's feedback and it comes from the most random places. Like this girl that I worked with, she just mentioned, hey Mary, like it seems like you're more happy when you're out in nature. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. That's a good point. So that opened up my brain. And then I talked to my cousin on the phone and she's like, Mary, like you can choose, like you make your own rules for your life. You don't have to be doing what you are doing. Like you can totally switch it up. Like you can make your own rules. And I was like, oh, and then from those feedbacks, then I thought, hey, I want to move to my grandparents' farm. You know, then like these new, these new, once you open up to different options, then new options do arise. And then it's like things that are like sometimes right in front of you that you didn't even consider. And it's like, oh, wait. I can just ask to do this and and other people won't even think of it, you know? That's true. I I noticed when you started talking about opportunities that you started talking so quickly uh, and (laughs) that I found that so amusing or funny. Uh, But but I was thinking like one advice, uh, key advice I've noticed I started giving a lot more to ENFPs Mm -hmm. and I think to some extent ENTPs is, uh, you know, learning to move at your own pace because Mm -hmm. I noticed, you know, like... uh, uh, it's so important uh, and I probably the key of synchronicity is paying attention to why you're doing things and what opportunities you're chasing on which opportunities are your opportunities and what is for you hmm. uh, so uh, I think a lesson for all the NFPs and I don't know if you resonate with this is to just uh, every time a new opportunity presents itself to think is this for me is this uh, does this connect hmm. with me this is this what I want? Is this connected with my values? Because it's so easy to get caught in. You're just making decisions, jumping from thing to thing, mm-hmm. and you can never really settle for anything, you know? Yeah. Because you're, yeah, you, your life is moving too fast for you, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Like, if life starts moving too fast, mm-hmm. you stop really thinking about what you're doing, and you start going on autopilot. And also, that's not good. We have to learn to stay mindful about the connections mm-hmm. we make and why we make those connections. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That's a good point. And now I'm like wanting to like, okay, let me go ponder <laughs> my life. 
I brought on a new existential revelation. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I will share one more coincidence too. Do it. Um, this is kind of like just a silly random one, but I was like really amazed at the time. All my life I've been really into Harry Potter mm -hmm. and I've been like, I oh. Same. Yeah. <laughs> and like, I'm like, I want to go to England or like, I want to, you know, somehow like, you know, be at the Harry Potter castle or, you know, like live out Harry Potter. Yeah. And then I just happened to choose this college. And when I looked inside, when I looked in the study abroad, they just happened to have a study abroad program that literally went to the Harry Potter castle. And I was like, what? It's those types of things. Or yeah. it's like, it's like all these different coincidences. Like, it's just like the universe. Like, I'll go somewhere and then like, I'll have the specifically perfect amount of money to do the certain thing. Or like, you'll, you'll just be given these certain things at a specific time or a certain thing that happened, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. Um, when I was really into the law of attraction, I was like trying out these different things, even though I was kind of like not sure about it, but I was like, okay, let me just try it. So what I was trying to do was manifest a light pink yoga mat. <laughs> okay. Anyways. <laughs> it was in Saudi Arabia and I went to this store. Yeah. <laughs> and I was thinking, okay, I want a light pink yoga mat. Like I was very specific. And mm. then I went there and I was like, all right, looking for the yoga mats. And I found them and I was like, oh, they were all like boring colors. And I was like, mm, okay, whatever. But then while I was there, I was like, wait, no. I still would like, so I put out that intention again, like light pink yoga mat. And then I was walking around just kind of aimlessly. And then in this random spot that didn't have like yoga mats, didn't have workout stuff, random spot, I found the light pink yoga mat. And I was like, what? You conjured it out in there. Uh, it, was, it wasn't there before, <laughs> but thanks to you thinking about it, it was like, it was there. I, yeah, I don't know. That was that was something else that stuck out to me. I was like, what? I, yeah. Because, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we had a funny uh, coincidence as well, because it was, um, I didn't know that you were in Sweden, but I didn't know where in Sweden you were. And uh, I'm not in Sweden. I'm in the Netherlands most of the mm -hmm. time, but I'm here visiting parents. Uh, and uh, I thought, okay, since I'm here, I might just ask and see, okay, where are you at? Uh, and it turned out you were like... Uh, yeah, super close by. And uh, so, like, I thought, okay, then it's clearly, like, uh, we are meant to hang out and make a video together or do something cool together. Yeah, I love when that type of thing happens. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, okay, that it seems like a green light from the universe. Yeah, because yeah, there's, there's not a lot of people living here in northern Sweden, so it's the most remote so place random. possible. And two random, like, um, Myers-Briggs YouTubers, and like I've already said to you, you know, I would watch you, and so it's like, here you are, like I'm like watching you. Well, I guess there you are. But yeah, and that's just so random. We both just happened to make YouTube videos and we both have watched each other's stuff and this both married break. And we're both in Sweden. Yeah, and you said you were planning to write to me like three weeks ago as well. So yeah. uh, we were clearly and like I was so in happy the, when you uh, that space of okay. Yeah, we're <laughs> telepathically I was like, come yes. on, you know me. You know exactly, me. exactly. Uh, and I've always had this thing, like this is my weird synchronicity. Um, I've noticed that I am really good at predicting numbers. Mm. Uh, and that's that's like the most amusing, strange thing. Uh, okay, sometimes I will tease people with this. Like, uh, 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 so uh, I was hanging out with a friend and uh, we were walking to her place. And uh, so I asked her, okay, but so which number are you living on then? I know she lived in a big apartment building with hundreds of numbers, you know. So I said, so are you like on 177? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how do you know i was like yeah uh, i guess i just did um, your brain was so open you're just receiving the information exactly and uh, that's like something i like to tease people about so like sometimes i will just randomly message one of my friends and i'll be like hey should you really be eating that extra piece mm. of chocolate oh my gosh <laughs> it's just a tease that's crazy i hope uh, you do that for me that'd be cool it's like yes and, you, and uh, then they'll be like how did you know <laughs> i was eating chocolate <laughs> i was like Whoa. That was just a lucky guess, you know, like it's uh, that's also fun because uh, Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, playful. It shows that the universe is like playful or I am Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's fun to play with because it's interesting. Oh like that it was this 1441 I was gonna ask like I see that all the time and like I've talked to other people too that they see these number synchronicities all the time like all the time one 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 two two one like Two to do, three to three, four to four. Every hour, like I'm looking at randomly, I was like, look at it, like, ah, four to four. Yeah. It's crazy. 
It's true. And you could be super rational about it and be like, oh, there are no coincidences. And when I get the lottery, I'm just going to write down a random number and I'm not mm. going to care about it. But why not choose something significant to you? Like, why not choose to give life significance and meaning? Like, if you can, I think we need spirituality in order to sometimes connect with our higher self. Because how do we dialogue with the unconscious? How do we manage the fact that we have a part of ourselves that we can't see? And how do we go from being who we are in our own script, in our own life, to being something more than that how do we ever change ourselves i think that's when we need spirituality and like yeah, we can use if we use it the right way i know there's definitely the wrong way to use spirituality but if you use it the right way um, tactically for your own benefit to make yourself happier and more mindful i think it's a good thing mm -hmm. This is my passionate, uh, <laughs> extorted feeling ramble. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. I do have something else to speak really quickly too. Tell me. <laughs> it goes along with the other story I just said. Um, so yeah, I, you know, I said, big change, like I need to be changed. And my brother was like, hey, if you want a big change, move to Saudi. And at the time too, I was like really wishing, like I want, like I was like, kept saying, please subscribe. Like I want a thousand subscribers. Like I was doing my break stuff and I was like, how can I, like, I just wanted to have this dream of, like, being, having a bunch of subscribers. Yeah. Um, but I had no idea how. Anyway, so I moved to Saudi, and then that was another synchronicity thing, which I had no idea of this. Like, everyone in Saudi is in love with YouTube, so all of a sudden, like, everyone was watching my videos for a little piece of time there. So that was also another crazy synchronicity of just, like, what? Like, I didn't even think that Saudi even had YouTube. I mean, <laughs> that probably sounds weird, but yeah. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Following... So I should go to Saudi Arabia to grow my channel. Yeah, when people ask me, like, Mary, like, what's some advice? I'm like, go to Saudi Arabia. <laughs> good, good advice. <laughs> so I want to say uh, thank you so much for coming on uh, my channel and sharing your experiences with synchronicities and coincidences. Um, let's do it every day. <laughs> let's. New video every day. Yeah. Um, move to Amsterdam first. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that'd be cool. Shout. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that the oh? Can, are you was that the end? Yes. Uh, oh. <laughs> but we can. Uh, I'm gonna do uh, like I did with uh, how you okay. did it. Okay. Um. Anyways, that was all for today. Thank you so much for joining in uh, this discussion. Do you have any last words you'd like to share? Mm, love to all. We're all light beans, and if we're beans, beans, light soybeans. <laughs> um. Yeah, and reminder to anyone watching is this moment right here is the only moment that actually exists so let's rejoice in this moment we're alive we're alive we are alive <laughs> so go be alive and uh, check out mary's channel down below thank you so much thank you bye